listen to that sound. I had dreamt of such a day. I had hoped my dreams had come true. Too good to be true. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore our planet, both above and below the surface, and find out what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. Welcome to our latest and greatest backyard, Roderick Bay in the Solomon Islands. After checking into the capital city of Honiara, we made the short 25 mile journey across the Iron Bottom Sound to the Florida Islands, where we found this piece of heaven on earth. After spending the last few months in Polynesian cultures like Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, we were excited to experience something totally new here in the Solomons. Roderick Bay is home to some super warm and friendly people, and today we had some big plans with our new friend John, who is the chief of the village here. But first, we had some underwater business to attend to. Last night we slept outside because, I mean, it was the perfect night. You could see the stars, like almost 360, Decrees because you can even see the reflection on the water, no clouds, shooting stars, and you wake up in the morning and you just have these amazing views. Too good to be true. Who's a hungry piggy? Because he wants food, but she already ate more than she should, so... Oh no, there's it's no food! Here. I think she's crying because she's jealous. <laughs> she doesn't get to go scuba diving. Bye, Peanut! See you later! We're going scuba diving! The plan was to try and find a shipwreck we'd heard about at a nearby island. Unlike most of the famous shipwrecks of the Solomons that were sunk during World War II, this one was a Japanese trawler that was scuttled about 20 years ago. We couldn't track down much else about its history, but nonetheless, we couldn't wait to get in the water. What if we're living in a fantasy? Some world that I could only dream. At a depth ranging from about 20 to 30 meters, the Mbike shipwreck lies on a sloping sandy bottom with lots of little hidden treasures around it. Shipwrecks often create habitats for marine life in otherwise barren parts of the ocean, and this wreck was one of the best examples of this I'd ever seen. Mystery, the only school. The flowers talk and trees can walk around. Sometimes our feet float off the ground. The variety and the sheer amount of marine life calling the site home was just as impressive as the wreck itself. And in particular, this little guy was one of the stars of the show. It's a type of nudibranch found throughout Indo-Pacific waters, typically in sandy or rubbly areas. And for whatever reason, they seemed to love this shipwreck. Nudibranchs are known for being decorated with some of the craziest colors in the ocean. And our little friend here has taken that to a whole nother level. The wreck was stunning enough on its own, but then Nate spotted a rather unusual critter that would end up stealing the show. This is the peacock mantis shrimp, 
and it's the most beautiful nightmare you will ever see underwater. They're equipped with club-like appendages that it uses to bludgeon and smash the unlucky animal that becomes its next meal. But what's fascinating about this hunting technique is the unbelievable force and speed at which they strike. The mantis shrimp delivers its fatal punch at the same velocity as a gunshot from a 22 caliber rifle. Pound for pound, if humans could harness the same amount of force, we would be able to punch through steel or throw a baseball all the way into orbit. Their punch is so fast that it results in cavitation bubbles that for a split second heat the surrounding water to a temperature just shy of that of the surface of the sun. And when these tiny bubbles collapse, they create an intense shockwave that can stun, dismember, or kill their prey instantly, even if they miss. The mantis shrimp is one of the most unique animals in the ocean, and we considered ourselves pretty lucky to have an encounter like this one. There she is. What are you guys doing? Just taking her for her daily swim. Let's see what she's been learning in the last few days of her swimming lessons. There she comes. Oh my god. She's, she's pretty good. Yeah, she can swim fast and so far. I've taken her to the front of the boat and she'll swim all from the front of the boat to the back of the boat. And I can't even keep there. up with her because she's the fastest. She's so pig. fast. Yeah. She's like a little lightning pig. But it's so hot. I like to bring the piggy in the water a couple Not times a day to cool off. Did That's you it. ever think you'd be naked in the Solomon Islands swimming with a pig? <laughs> I had dreamt of such a day. <laughs> I had poked. My dreams have come true. All the dreams have come true. Yeah. Well, I hate to uh, burst your bubble, but me and Peanut are it's our cooking day today. I have a special guest partner that's going to be helping me in the kitchen today. Her name is Peanut, and we're going to be cooking up a storm today because we've been invited um, by John from the village just across the way to do like a potluck dinner, and they're going to make some local food, and they asked for us to make a few different dishes or like foods that they don't have in Solomon. So. Peanut and I are gonna get together. We're gonna brainstorm a couple of ideas and think of some nice dishes to make that we can share. We set to work on cooking a full-on three-course meal to literally feed an entire village. Our menu for the evening, homemade hummus and flatbreads for the first course, pad thai for the second course, and peach cobbler for dessert. Peanut, you wanna get the oats for the cobbler? Good girl! That sun. Peanut and I were struggling to finish in time, so we enlisted the help of some very hard-working assistants. <laughs> Just let it die all free. <laughs> With our feast finally complete, it was time to load everyone up and head to shore. Good evening for all of you, all our different boats. Uh, this uh, chief John from uh, Rosewood Behind Away. You all my son and daughters. And this is your area and this is your home. They make a lot of effort with this lovely setup. And I think it's like a really community-based. We'll cook something, they will cook something, and like sharing it. I, I love it. I think this is, yeah, this is the reason why of everything, you know, like this is the reason why. Okay, uh, peanut. <laughs> Come on, put oh peanut. Oh my goodness! Oh, okay. Oh! Oh my God! Oh, peanut! They just made a crown with her favorite flowers. <laughs> so look, it's the happiest piggy ever. Oh my God. So good. Do you know what you're eating? No, <laughs> I don't know, but it's so good. Yeah. Sweet potato with clams. 
and an amazing spicy soup, like gorgeous with local different kind of sweet potatoes. They served us up their local food and now they're eating our food. And, they don't know exactly what we're eating. They don't know exactly what we're eating. Yeah, it's kind of fun. That's the fun of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Good peanut! Making fr- oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so now I call the uh, the girls to be um, doing some of the custom dancing for you. The songs they write and the dances they choreographed are inspired mostly by the nature and wildlife that surrounds their island and by the activities that fill their daily lives. Each song has a theme, such as a specific bird or a canoe. They found all the canoes to come and uh, yeah, that is the name of the song. The women were dressed beautifully with handmade costumes crafted almost entirely from materials found on their island. The boys were a bit less polished and a little bashful. But they all had one thing in common, which was the warmth of their smiles and willingness to give us visitors a glance into their unique way of life. So beautiful. Yeah. It was like a very special, <laughs> positive energy, and they're all so happy. It's beautiful. <laughs> I thought it was funny to see how it's it's very very different than anything we know. But then if you see the girls dancing and they they like do it just that little bit better than the boys, and the boys are like you recognize yourself, and then like they're a bit more like goofy headed and, and it's funny how it's like even at the other side of the world it's exactly the same as like home. All the girls were laughing at the boys, yeah, the, yeah. Boys, the boys were kind of making a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I love the musicality, all the tribe songs. Wait, wait, wait. I think they are the really keeps you going. Yeah, yeah like it keeps you going, you know, like you get immersed on the on the dance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, John. You're welcome. That was a very nice evening. We're very grateful. Thank you Thank very you much, so much, too, for all, all your food you brought it and uh, everyone they tested because they not tested in your country yeah. where they were very happy and they got a good time with you. Oh, very cool. Thanks, Thank brother. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. We'll see you later. Down here. <laughs> what is going on? We're, we're at the market. What we're do you mean we're at the market? Uh, at about sunset every day, all the villagers come out in their canoes and they bring us their goods. And so we just got a pineapple and some mushroom for a shirt. Yeah. It's a trading culture. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love trading culture. I think that that should definitely come back. They don't even want your money, they just want something. 
And so you kind of give them options. Do you want rice or this shirt? <laughs> We're holding out. We're going to get like, our own little village hut for this piggy. No, never. We're going to get a beachside resort for this pig. Tina, she's at a beachside resort right now. Some little floating pineapple. It's one of the girls. is the almost silent sound of tiny waves breaking over the shallow reef next to us and canoes paddling through calm waters and Nerea playing the ukulele in the background. So it's a very, very chill afternoon on board Sylphia. And one of the things that we've kind of talked about as a group um, is that we felt like the last few months we've been cruising now in Sylphia, we left New Zealand in July and during that time we've sailed about 5,000 miles <laughs> and we visited like six different countries and we've been working non-stop and just going really 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 flat out like really hard out for the last you know five months straight everybody kind of felt like it would be nice to slow down a bit so we've got three or four months in the Solomons and we decided that we want to take some more time to enjoy and have some time to ourselves. But one of the things on board Sylphia that I've really been thinking about a lot lately is how am I growing as a person? And so I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about some of the things that I've been up to and some of my goals. And maybe if I share them on YouTube, it will inspire me to continue working even harder towards them. So one of my main goals that I've been working on is I've been learning French um, with Emily and Océane and Chloe and it's something that I try to work on a little bit every day. So I thought maybe I would just kind of show you around Sylphia and see what everyone's up to and find out a little bit more about uh, some of our goals on board. Bonjour madame. Comment ça va? Ça va toi? Très bien, merci. And I was wondering, now that we have a bit more downtime, what are some of your goals slash hobbies slash interests Ooh. that you want to take some more time to enjoy while we're here? It's funny you ask because just before to go swimming with Chloe, I took from the, our little library a book about sailing and to know more about the wind and all these elements mm -hmm. that you have to take in account when sailing. I'm actually uh, reading my advanced dive book to get more experienced in diving. Mm, uh, diving obviously because we went diving twice and I haven't been diving for four months. <laughs> Learning, 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 learning. What song are you learning? I'm trying to learn I'm Yours. You have to start with easy songs, otherwise you will frustrate. I play a little bit of ocarina, mm -hmm. so I'm getting into it slowly. I've been working on trying to better like my electrical repair. Uh, we're having a little bit of compressor issues, so I've been troubleshooting that for several days now. Spearfish a little more, read a little bit. Learning a few more things about the boat, like my antenna, like we changed the lines of the furler of the Genoa and the main. I've actually uh, been finding myself staring at clouds a lot more, making <laughs> shapes out of them, and I, I mean that actually. <laughs> uh, just kind of like taking time to just enjoy the little things. And You're doing your advanced diving course as well? Yeah, I did all my um, theory. So now we just do the practice and then should be good. You'll be advanced. Yeah. <laughs> Peanut! Hi, big girl! What do you want to oh what do you want to work on? Do you want to improve your jumping skills inside the boat? Come on! Come on, big girl! You can do it! Go, Peanut, go! Woo! You did it! Yeah, she's only been able to jump into the boat by herself for like maybe a week. She used to have little boxes that she would use as steps. So peanuts top goals involve mobility. How does it feel to be enjoying a bit of a slower pace of life lately. Very good. Very yeah. weird as well to be like, I should be doing something, but no, just enjoying 
to have time to smell the roses, if you will, is cloud watching. So. It feels like holidays, like absolutely holidays. <laughs> Train hard in this one. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Tune in next time as we welcome Chief John aboard as our newest crew and continue to be blown away by the absolute beauty of the Florida Islands. Do you have any ideas for dinner? Yeah, that's a good idea. I think hummus sounds good. We can make hummus and flatbread. So your so. thing is you want to be a crazy, a crazy pig lady? That's, that's your skit? That's your skit? Me a crazy pig lady? Is mama being a crazy pig lady? Yeah, daddy doesn't know. He doesn't understand us. Ooh. That's very fancy. Yeah. We are very fancy everybody now. You want to get the oats for the cobbler? Yeah. <gasps> Good girl. I'm really helping a lot right now. Ooh, ooh. Little, little tail. <laughs> <laughs>